It's time for Inside Gamecock Athletics, a close-up look at Jacksonville State University sports. Now, here's your host, the voice of the Gamecocks, Mike Paris. It's tournament time for our teams here at Jacksonville State. Gamecock basketball both in postseason play in the Ohio Valley Conference Tournament. Coach Rick Petrie and the ladies with a huge win Saturday, a win on the road to wrap up the regular season at SIUE that lifted them into the tournament. Okay, here we go. You're the number seven seed. You're going to face Moorhead State. It'll be the third meeting this year, six meetings in the last two years with them. So they know you very well, and you know them very well, don't you? Yeah, we do. And in and, um, and, and this year's meetings, uh, you know, we lost at their place by 11, and then we won here about a week and a half ago by 11. So, um, so w w there's a high level of familiarity in terms of how we play and what we do. Um, I think they know us. We know them. Uh, now, they have tremendous talent, right. tremendous raw ability. I, I've said this many times. In terms of individual uh, talent, th they've got more than anybody in our league. Um, th they've got a bunch of uh, high major transfers that have made a tremendous impact for them, as well as Miranda Crockett, who is their best player. Who She's homegrown. She's the only four-year kid of their top six. Um, but... Listen, they, they are, uh, they, they've had, I believe you, you even quoted this to me, I think they've had five different kids score 27 points mm -hmm. this year. Uh, so they've got a, they can hurt you from a multitude of angles. And so, you know, we have to, uh, we have to play at a high level defensively and then offensively we've got to take care of the ball. One of the reasons why we're able to, I think, beat them here was because we didn't give them easy baskets in transition. Uh, there were times at their place where right. we turned it over, which led to easy baskets. And so, and then the other thing we d we did not do here, we didn't foul them. You know, at, at their place we fouled them a bunch, and they made a bunch of free throws. So if we can, if we can defend cleanly without fouling, if we can take care of the ball, uh, uh, and then offensively convert a reasonable number of times, uh, then then I think we have a chance. Go back to Saturday, or probably as good as you've played maybe this season, and it was a pressure situation for your ladies and responded very well. A uh, place you only the second time in six tries that you've been able to win up there. So, confidence-wise, I think they're feeling pretty good. Are they not going? Sure, in? you know, and, and uh, <clears throat> of course, you know, last week was a mixed bag because you know we lose on Thursday, but actually, Thursday our defensive effort wasn't bad. It's just we couldn't make a basket, um, and, and, and but Saturday we were able to make. Uh, you know, when we lost to SIUE here, uh, they went zone in the fourth quarter, and um, and we didn't score. Out, uh, we made one basket outside the lane the rest of the game. Uh, we were able to make enough perimeter shots. You know, Destiny Elliott hits two threes in back-to-back -back possessions that takes a three-point deficit to a three-point lead. And, and then defensively, I think we were, we were sound all game. Uh, and 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 we just. Uh, and listen, against the number one offensive rebounding team in the league, we out-rebounded. Right. So I, th I think at the end of the day, while I think SIUE wanted it desperately, I think we wanted it even more desperately. And, uh, and I think that's why we're able to come up with a win. Well, it says something about your ladies in that situation to be able to perform and, and, and do what they did. No it? doubt, because uh, we now we're in a position where uh, because we weren't able to convert on Thursday, we, we had to convert on Saturday. And so the fact that we were able to, we had to do it and did it, Says, like you said, says a lot about our kids. All right, uh, first game at their place. That was mid-January, 66-55 final. They won it. You win 68-57 here. You've talked about defense and with offense and what you've done this year, upper 50s, low 60s, that's your best chance to win if you keep it in that range probably? I, yes. I mean, I, I think that, you know, um, uh, when we're at our best in terms of, you know, winning games, our opponents are in the 50s and we're in the, in the 60s. I think when we're at our best. Uh, certainly you adapt and sometimes, you know, things go a, a different way. Um, but uh, but th that being said, it all comes down to being able to convert. You know, they are a great offensive rebounding team, talking about Merlehead State, uh, between um, uh, Campbell, the five player, and, and Miranda Crockett, who just crashes uh, tremendously. Um, we've got to keep them off the glass so that when we get the rebound, we can push it out on them. And, uh, and, and then when, when, you, when you can push it out, uh, it gives you an opportunity to score against defense that isn't set. And so we have a better chance of scoring if there aren't five defenders down the floor. 
if we're able to get, beat them down and give ourselves a better opportunity that way. So that's why it's so important to get stops and finishes rather than fouls and free throws or, or made baskets because um, those situations allow the defense to get back and get set. So if we can get stops and defensive rebounds and push that thing, then it's going to give us a better chance to score. Overall tournament, Belmont's the regular season champ, looking for a, what, fourth straight tournament title. I think they're not maybe the prohibitive favorite as they have been in the, fa uh, the past. I guess they are the favorite, though, since they won the regular season. Sure. With them, the tournament as a whole, any surprises for you going in? No, I, th I think in, going back to Belmont, they've lost two games this year. Uh, second place lost five. So there's a three-game gap be between one and two. Um, if you'd have asked me last week, you know, they, 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 for the month of February, they had averaged winning by like 26 points a game. And then all of a sudden, last week, they lose at Tennessee Martin, and they struggle to beat SEMO on the road. And Belmont's a great defensive team, and they gave up 88 points. So, it, so last week is hard to figure how that turned out the way it did. Um, so you know, maybe there's a chink in their armor that, that we hadn't seen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I haven't studied that because they're on the other side of the bracket, and you know, right. that, that's a long way down the road. But, but they've clearly showed an opening to others uh, because if you'd asked me a week ago right now, I'd have said somebody's going to have to play out of their minds to beat them. But somebody did beat them last week, and, so, and another team almost beat them. So, uh, so I, that being said, I think it's more open than it would have been otherwise. Nice to be back in the tournament, isn't it, to, There's to no be doubt. there? Last year you got to the semifinals. Good news, you win Wednesday, then you get a day off Thursday to recover a little bit. And, and that's true, the and that's true. And one of the tough things about this is we're coming off the longest road trip that we right. take and then have to turn right back around and get on the road. That's a challenge. And so, uh, you know, hopefully we can, we can do everything we can to invest all we've got to win that game on Wednesday to give us that free day on Thursday to prepare for Friday. All right, sir. Thank you for the time. Good luck. Thank you. Jacksonville State takes on Moorhead State on Wednesday afternoon, 3 o'clock, in the opening round of the Women's OVC Tournament. We'll have all the action on our Gamecock Sports Network. Hope you'll join us. Our coverage starts at 245. It's Tournament Week for Jacksonville State. We're headed to the OVC Tournament as the Gamecocks have concluded the regular season. 23-8 overall on the year, 15-3 in OVC play. Coach Ray Harper, you were picked third preseason poll right there with Belmont Murray State. You finished third. Most wins ever for Jacksonville State in conference play in Division I and the 23 wins that you have at this point in time matches the mark that you said last year. So it's been a pretty good regular season, hasn't it? It's been a really good season. I mean, uh, as we look back, uh, like I said, there's three or four games you'd like to have back, and there's three or four that you probably won that you wouldn't want to try again. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, I think most years 15-3 would probably win a conference championship. Unfortunately, this year wasn't one of those years. And you gave Belmont both of their losses, and Murray one of the two losses that they recorded this season. Yeah, we, you know, we the two teams that finished ahead of us, uh, we were 3-0 and against those guys. and. Um, you know, should be a great tournament. Uh, I think it should be a wide open field, and uh, we'll see what happens. We've talked uh, during the course of the season, but the the two games on the road in non-conference play at Wichita and uh, also at um, West Virginia. West Virginia. Thank you, sir. I don't brain dead. Those two stick out in your mind, I guess, and then the two losses in league play to Martin and Eastern Kentucky. Well, really, the two uh, that really stick out is Austin P here at home and, and Martin on the road. Those were two games that, you know, Austin P came out of us down 22 to four, start the game. We just, we didn't seem ready. And, and that and was the Saturday after you'd beat Murray on Thursday. Exactly. Um, and then Martin, you know, we didn't have Jamal. He was out with a concussion and uh, we couldn't make shots. I mean, we'd just gone through the same deal against Austin P. We we're 0 for 15 from the three. Um, and, and we still were right there with a chance to win both games. But, you know, sometimes it uh, doesn't work in your favor. But uh, I thought as a group we, we, we got better. You know, I think we've won seven in a row, six in a row, something like that at this point. Uh, so that's kind of what you want leading into postseason, uh, some momentum. Well, you played as good as you played all year, I think, Saturday at SIUE. You won that one easily. So you're – and, and the seven straight wins, that's a Division One record. So you've got it going. Are you play it? Are you where you want to be playing your basketball now as you get into the tournament? We're close. I mean, obviously, uh, I wanted to, to see us play well Saturday. I didn't feel like we'd played well at Eastern Illinois. I didn't feel like we played well at East, Eastern Kentucky, Moorhead. 
But with that being said, we found a way to win, and we've won a lot of different ways against a lot of different styles. Uh, you know, I think we're a team, as we lead into the tournament, we can play fast, we can play slow, we can play against zone, um, we can play against man. So there's not going to be anything that we're going to see that that should affect us. Um, now, we obviously don't know who will play Thursday, so the, this week of preparation will be all about us and uh, trying to get better. So. Probably Monday will be one of those real light practices, trying to get legs and minds fresh and uh, get ready to go to Evansville and try to win a conference championship. You'll play the winner of Wednesday's game between Eastern Illinois and UT Martin. Any preference as to who you play? No, I mean, obviously two, two tough games with Eastern Illinois and then a loss against Martin. So two teams that's played us extremely well this year. Um, but, you know, I, I'm excited about our guys. I think we'll be ready to roll. and. I think they'll be excited about playing this tournament this weekend as well. Well, one thing about it, you found the secret weapon, I think, on the road trip last week. Uh, Detorian Ware comes off the bench and had 20 in the, in the game Thursday and 15 then Saturday at SIUE. So I'm sure he's in the scouting report heading into the tournament for your opponents, isn't he? I would think he would need to be uh, based on how he – I thought he had a good week of practice um, and, and then we were struggling to score. And so we turned to him and – not only did we turn to him, he responded. And you know, when guys respond, I mean, you have to give them opportunities. And so he will get more opportunities here this week in Evansville. All right, Jason Burnell, average double-double junior college before he came here. You've known him, his family, most of his life. Did you feel like he could produce and put up the numbers that he's put up this season? I did. I mean, he's one of those guys that age-wise, he should just be a junior in college. I mean, he went to when he went to Georgia Southern as a freshman, he was 17 years old. He probably wasn't physically ready at that point. Um, but his best basketball is ahead of him, and he's just going to continue to get better. He's one of those kids that has got a good basketball IQ. He can score it. He can pass it. Uh, what he's done for us, he's become a, a not just last year, I thought defensively, he was a little bit behind, but he's one of our better defenders now. He understands where to be, and he's always in the right spots. But, um, man, he's had an unbelievable senior year, and I think it's credit to him and how hard he worked in the offseason. Any surprises as you look at the field overall in the tournament? Anybody that surprised you or anything in the league and, and the way it finished out that, that uh, got, got your attention in some way? Not really. I mean, I, I think you'd have to take your head off to Belmont. I mean, uh, I think they left here at three and two, um, and then they reel off 15 straight or whatever, 13 straight, whatever it is, uh, to win the conference championship. Uh, once they went to Murray State and Austin P and won both of those games, I looked at the remaining schedule. I told our guys, they, uh, I told our staff, they will not lose another game. It's just who they are. They don't lose games they shouldn't lose. Uh, Rick's teams have always done that, and they did it again. So I think you'd have to take your hat off to what they were able to do. Well, uh, as we mentioned, you get either EIU or Martin on Thursday in the quarters. You win that one, then you get to you get to see the racers again. You beat them in the regular season meeting, and a uh, team that eliminated you in the tournament in the semis last year. They did eliminate us last year. I'd forgotten about that. So, yeah, uh, hopefully we can take care of business Thursday and be uh, be fun to see Murray State again. You won it two years ago. Is this bunch better equipped to win the tournament than you were with that team two seasons back? Well, I'll, I will say they're, they're, we're much more talented. Uh, if we're dialed in. The league in, is different now. The league's we're... different. Um, but at the same time, I mean, uh, that Belmont team was really good. Um, you know, I, I don't think Murray was – as good that year as they are this right. year, um, but you know I I like I like this team when when we're right uh, like we were Saturday like we were against Belmont like we were against Murray State uh, we're dangerous uh, because we can we can score the ball in a lot of different areas uh, you know Jamal Gregory's a guy that can go get 25 on any given night Marlon Hunter if you look at our stats I mean all of them have done it at right. some point. Um, you know, Dietrich Mustella, I mean, I thought he had a really good weekend. He didn't shoot the ball well Thursday, but I thought defensively he was very good for us, played well Saturday. Um, he's one of those guys that's coming off the bench. That I don't know if anybody in the league has one coming off the bench better than him. Um, and if he's right, he might go get us 
He 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 could be one of those guys very easily leave on Saturday night and be the yeah. conference tournament MVP. I mean, he's that talented. Um, and now you had a guy like Detorian Ware who had a great weekend. The area that we haven't always been great at is shooting the three. And those two right there could change all that this weekend. You sound like you're excited, ready to go. We're 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 excited. I mean, uh, I like I've said this from day one. I like this group and. Uh, you know, nothing leading into this tournament changes my mind about it. I, if we get on that bus uh, heading to Evansville with the right frame of mind, uh, we'll see what happens. Best of luck. All right. Thank you, Mike. Jacksonville State Head Coach Ray Harper, Gamecocks. In the quarterfinals of the tournament, Thursday night we'll play the winner of the Wednesday game between Eastern Illinois and UT Martin. Tip-off time scheduled for 8.30. All the action Thursday and throughout the tournament for Jacksonville State. Join us on our Gamecocks Sports Network. Our coverage on Thursday night gets started at 8 p.m. Thank you for watching Inside Gamecock Athletics. Join us again next week at this same time for more on Jacksonville State Sports on Inside Gamecock Athletics.